Local pharmaceutical company Aspen is uh, turning to the Serum Institute of India. It has signed a deal with the Institute to manufacture and sell four Aspen branded vaccines for Africa. Stavros Nikolaou is Group Strategic Trade Senior Executive for Aspen Pharmacare. He joins us now. Uh, Stavros, thank you for being with us as always. There was some excitement about you producing Johnson & Johnson, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, originally under the new name of Spinovax. Uh, then tell us what happened or uh, I guess why nothing happened after that. Francis, firstly, uh, good evening and thanks very much for having me. Um, Aspenovax, as you correctly point out, was uh, and remains a very important intervention for COVID-19. Um, of course, we don't know what trajectory COVID will take futuristically. Um, at, at very least, we know that there will be booster demand uh, for uh, for COVID vaccines. Uh, so we are still holding out here that uh, there will be some demand, albeit a, a, a lesser demand for a Spinovax. Uh, but it was also very important uh, to clarify that a Spinovax uh, and COVID vaccines are what we call emergency vaccines. They, they're required at a point in time when there's a pandemic you get a different category of vaccines, which are routine vaccines. So these are vaccines with big volumes, but uh, predictable annual uh, demand. Uh, unlike what you've had with, with COVID, where you know you can get uh, spikes and troughs at any moment, routine vaccines, which is what we announced today, is, is a more steady and predictable business. Okay, so there's some certainty here and you've partnered with the biggest um, institute uh, for vaccines in the world, the Serum Institute. Just, just tell us about the four vaccines. Uh, what will they be for? So they, these are all very important pediatric vaccines uh, for the continent. Uh, in no particular order of, of importance, they include a vaccine for pneumococcal virus, uh, rotavirus, uh, uh, polymeningitis A, and then there's a six-in-one hexavalent vaccine which covers things like diphtheria, polio, pertussis, which is whooping cough. Uh, so it's a six-in-one. So these are all bread and butter vaccines for the continent. But what, what is critical here is this announcement which uh, combines, as you said, the, the world's largest vaccine producer, with Africa's largest pharmaceutical company, um, is set to change the face of vaccine production on the continent. It responds directly to the African Union heads of state call for a minimum of 30% of Africa's vaccine requirements to be procured from Africa. And this is a very important first step in, in that direction. Uh, it's also important because we, we know it's well rehearsed by now that Africa found itself at the back end of the queue uh, when, when COVID manifested. And the only way we can prevent a similar pattern in future is if Africa has its own capacities. And this, this deal we announced today speaks precisely to that and security of supply for the future. All right, so this means certainty for the kids and, and their parents. Um, you, you are required to get a lot of vaccines in, in the early years. What other difference does it make in, in terms of cost, for example? So I, I think, Francis, we, we need to point out that Aspen has proven to be uh, both very efficient and skilled at, uh, at doing technology transfers. There's a technology transfer that's required here, so we've proven to be very efficient in, in doing these technology transfers. And we've also proven to be a, a very efficient producer of both pharmaceuticals and vaccines. I mean, we saw this with, with the J&J &J, um, contract manufacturing arrangement. And uh, so we are, we are confident that what this will mean ultimately for the African patient, for, for moms and kids out there on the African continent, is that they will have security of supply and they will have affordable and efficient vaccines that will uh, a, a allow us as a continent to better manage some of the terrible health uh, metrics we have. I mean, Africa shoulders uh, the worst disease burden of any continent and nothing is as effective as vaccines 
in preventing disease. Yeah. So there will be immense benefits to both the healthcare systems and also the consumer or consumers of these vaccines in future. So, so India, so we'll learn from India, a huge player in vaccine production. Um, so are you saying these vaccines are just a start? It's a, it's a chance for us to get into the game, uh, but the dream is much bigger. You know, Francis, nothing beats, uh, nothing uh, breeds confidence uh, like confidence, right? And I, I think this is such an important first step because if you look at at the, at the four vaccines we're talking about, they, these are really important vaccines for the continent. And, and I, I have no doubt that this is a start of things to come. Um, of course, uh, we've, got a, we've got ambitions of building a, a, a pipeline of vaccines. Um, this is the start of it. And, and we hope that futuristically, this will lead to other vaccines and an active pipeline that we can eventually commercialize into Africa. You know, there's a very important element here that I haven't spoken about. And, uh, you know, Africa, uh, you know, Africa are, are laggards when it comes to biotechnology. And this is an important first step in giving Africa biotechnology independence, as we call it. Now, why is that so important? It's important because we train all these scientists on the continent and then they leave. They go and they, you know, they do fantastic jobs in, in, in the US and in Europe and in the UK. We lose them from our continent. Why do we lose them? Because we don't have these capacities. So building this type of capacity is critical not only for patients, for governments and healthcare systems, but also to retain talented Africans on our continent so they can contribute futuristically. Well, uh, certainly investors uh, like this deal and, and your results uh, yesterday and you're, you're pointing out the bigger picture here. Just tell us the mechanics. Uh, what I presume is that uh, people from the Serum Institute come and, and teach you uh, how to make the vaccines. So you pay for the IP and then you sell the exact same thing under your name. Is, is that what it is? Basically like a generic? So it, it's, it's a license and manufacture agreement, meaning that we license for a 10 year period, the intellectual property, very important that you own your, in, your own IP. That's exactly what we will get here. So it will be an Aspen vaccine produced by Aspen, sold under an Aspen brand name. Um, what is the process uh, that gets followed? There's a technology transfer element uh, to this. Um, but as I indicated earlier, um, we are, extremely well known to be an, an efficient and reputable company in terms of the skills and competencies required for these technology transfers. In fact, in the instance of Johnson & Johnson, um, they, they contracted 10 companies, I believe. At the time, we were number nine. We were so efficient that we leapfrogged the other eight ahead of us and became the first uh, and we were the only Southern Hemisphere company, incidentally, the only African company in the J&J &J arrangement. We, we leapfrogged the others into position one, and that demonstrated both the skills and capabilities that exist uh, at Aspen's Kabecha facility. So we are very confident around our capabilities to receive these technology transfers, to do the validation batches that are required, jump through the regulatory hurdles, and then eventually commercialize for the benefit of patients and healthcare systems. All right, well, congratulations on that deal and thanks for the explanation, Aspen Pharma Group Strategic Trade Senior Executive Stavros.